Be sure to check us out on Patreon. There you will find our community with several different tiers of learning. Our Patreon community is all about immersing yourself in the streams, teachings, and the Taya practice with lots of Taya tools and Taya teachings via weekly live video and exclusive coaching sessions at patreon.com. Birth and death are the only two things that are guaranteed. You know, like, I don't, I don't know why everyone's so freaking out about this thing. We're, it's, everyone is going to get there some way or another. You know, no yeah. one's escaping this. Yeah, we're it is funny do. how much we fear death, and it's the one thing that we all know we're going to experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was it? What's that saying? Death and taxes, two things you can't escape. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the Stream of David podcast. I am here with everyone's favorite guest, Manifesting <laughs> Matt Garden. I, I never know what you're going to call yourself. It's always funny. Manifesting Matt Garden. Hello. Hello, everyone. All the way from Australia, not Sydney. Where are you now in Australia? I'm in Queensland. I'm in uh, a little town called Caloundra. Population, uh, probably about 7,000 Zimmer frames. And um, everyone's retired up here. I'm the youngest by about 30 years. Um, yeah, it's in, it's like north of, it's, it's in the north part of the country. Like about 12, 14 hours drive north of Sydney. Yeah, it's are lovely you up on the water or inland? Yeah, no, no, I'm right on the water. I'm, oh, I'm good. like eight minutes to the beach. Yeah, good. Well, I know you like yeah. that, so good. Good for you. It's cut. We were talking about it yesterday. It's kind of like it's kind of like the Florida of Australia. Oh, really? But, yeah, but without the crazy. <laughs> without the crazy. There was judgment in my voice because we really judge yeah. Florida in the United States. It was the nice part of Florida, right? Like yeah, the weather's there, there are cool. there are one. I'm all about appreciation. I actually appreciated my time. I was in Florida for 12 years. Yeah. And I had a good job. I had a lovely home. I made some good friends. I loved the people that I worked for. Uh, the hurricanes were a little exciting. Uh, <laughs> the humidity, you get used to it there. The bugs, you don't get used to. Yeah. Uh, the snakes and the alligators, you know, they're there. Mm -hmm. uh, and the beaches are beautiful. Yeah. So there's, there's my list of appreciation of all things Florida. And I'll be going back in January. We're going to uh, Fort Lauderdale. And then going on a cruise. So I'll be back in Florida in January. So, but we're not talking about Florida. And we're not talking about the Florida of Australia. It's just funny. If you're in the United States and you called something the Florida, it probably would not be positive. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's it, true, true. It's not, it's not, it's not the crazy part. It's the nice kind of always sunny, lots of retired people, very kind of nice and slow moving part. Yeah. Well, there, there's a great, there's a, there's a, I don't want to say crazy vibe. I don't want to offend anyone. Mm -hmm. Uh, but there's there's a there's an amped up vibe in Florida for sure. There's an amped up vibration. But I will tell you, Casadega, Florida. If you ever ha have a chance to go there, that's where I met the stream for the first time through a psychic. Oh, wow. Casadega wow. is a cool little village, and I dreamt about it for years before I ever went there. And I was there, and I walked around, and there's a different vibration there. And I remember looking around, realizing this is what I've been dreaming. I've had this recurring dream for years, reoccurring dream, wow. of walking down this little kind of country road forest. And then coming along a clearing with a little pond and a little white church. And that would be, and sometimes the church would be just the church, no people. Sometimes the church would be like cars everywhere and people and letting out. But I kept dreaming about this church. Well, I went to see the psychic Hazel Burley who told me that I was a channel and waiting for her appointment. I was walking around this little town and I came around the curve and saw the dream, saw the church and realized this is what I've been dreaming about all these years. And it was amazing. And Hazel was amazing. I, I went to her. She was the one that told me I was uh, a channel, had this amazing experience with her. Just, just, she just knew everything. I'm not a big fan of predicting the future because I do believe we create our reality. She though predicted that I was going to move to Seattle. She predicted the house that I was going to live in. I didn't, I didn't think about it until afterward I was, because I was living in Florida. She said, you're going to live in this big, beautiful home at the top of a mountain and everyone's going to come visit you. And when a couple of years later, I actually got a job transfer from Florida to Seattle. I bought a house at the top of a mountain, big, beautiful house. Everyone wanted to come to see Seattle. So we had house guests all the time. And then it hit me. Oh my God, Hazel predicted this. She actually tuned into that vibrational possibility mm -hmm. and told me about it. It was really cool. So I, I love all that. And then I went back, I took uh, somebody back, I took my then partner, Troy, back. And I remember saying, I just, I love the vibration there. I just want to go sit on her porch in a rocking chair. <laughs> I didn't even know that she had a porch in a rocking chair. I didn't see that part of her house when I went. Yeah. I'm not kidding, Matt. I showed up. She says, okay, you know, I'm going to take Troy in for a session. Now, David, come out back. 
here's your rocking chair. Wow. Wow. Yeah. It was that cool. She literally wow. knew and put me in a rocking chair. The woman's amazing. Amazing. Yeah. I don't know if she still practices. I spoke to her a few years ago because I wrote about her in the book and she was mm -hmm. in it. And so I sent her a copy and I called her. Uh, she's very advanced in years. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't know if she's still with us or not in physical, but uh, she's amazing. If she's still practicing, I recommend her because it was a great experience for me. Yeah. Wow. Awesome. But we're talking about a different topic today. We're actually talking about death. We are. The heavy topic of death. And the reason we're talking about death is because... Uh, is it a heavy topic? I think it's heavy for a lot of people. It's heavy for yeah. a lot of people. A lot of people consider it. It's not heavy for me, yeah, uh, but it is yeah. heavy for a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, my father died Friday, three days ago. Mm -hmm. uh, he died of COVID pneumonia. He was 80, almost 83. He would have been 83 next month. I'm moving through the experience as I do in appreciation of his life and our relationship. Um, I'm tuning a little more into the suffering of my stepmother right now. Mm -hmm. you know, she's definitely grieving and, and mourning and, and having a tough time as she is to be expected. They were together for 48 years, I believe. Oh, wow. And I will see her next week. We're traveling uh, for the, the funeral and all that. Mm -hmm. But every time I've had this happen now, for me, death is this amazing transition from physical back to non-physical in my belief system. And I've witnessed uh, Michael's father, I was in the room when Michael's father mm -hmm. transitioned last year and it was beautiful mm -hmm. and it was just such a peaceful, amazing thing to witness. I've also witnessed his mother who fought it and it was a different experience. I wasn't there when she passed, but it, she was fighting it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and with my father, according to my stepmother and sister, it was very peaceful. They took him off. He was on a ventilator. They removed him from life support. He transitioned within an hour. And my sister described it as being just a very peaceful thing. Yeah, so, nice. yeah. And I know that it's not always that way. And I know that it's not always an elderly person that we mm -hmm. have different experiences with death, uh, especially when people die unexpectedly or young and we consider it very tragic. But what we were talking about before we hit record, we always have the greatest conversations before we start the podcast <laughs> that we now need to bring back is that, you know, why, why do we suffer in it? Mm, yeah yeah why, why, and, and i think one of the things is uh, obviously it, it's you know th there are there are awful experiences of death right they're losing a child catastrophic you know tr traumatic deaths and all anything those things. violent or tragic or especially to you know a yeah. child i understand the labeling of that as this shouldn't be happening i understand that i completely understand that mm -hmm. if something happened to my dog mm -hmm. i would I would be sad, you know, prematurely, not, not dying of old age or, or, or that sort of thing. So, you know, amp that times a million. And I'm sure that's the way you feel about a child when something like yeah. that happens. Yeah. So this isn't about having to have a specific experience. It's just about being able to zoom out and say, do I have to suffer in this? I can choose yeah. to. And I, think, and I think, and I think the sort of the kind of death experience that we're talking about is, is more the experience that your dad had or, or the one that my mom's going to have very shortly. It's a, a natural finish or an expected finish of uh, an extended, well-lived lifespan. You know, you, your dad had a good life. He filled it full of good experiences. He was coming to the end. His body was kind of failing him. Everyone kind of knew where this was heading, you know? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm talking about all death experiences, though, and I'm mm -hmm. not saying again, I'm not saying if you're a, if you listen to the stream of David or if you practice Taya, that you have to have this sort of belief. I'm not saying that at all. Mm -hmm. I think whatever experience you have is exactly what you should have. I like to play with the idea and in the Taya practice. We call this creating a vibrational note. You're creating an idea of experiencing something in a different way. Yeah. Well, we talk a lot about what is the source perspective? Mm. Everything I have ever, when I've, when I have set the intention to quiet my mind, raise my vibration and tap into source on such a deep level that I can channel the vibration is never any type of judgment of anything. In fact, it's appreciation mm. of everything. And I have tapped into yeah. the appreciation vibe of tragedy. Mm of things. And I've done that a lot of times for people that are going through Taya boot camp who have suffered a loss of a child or something, you know, extreme abuse as a child themselves. 
those things that we really want to label should not be. Mm-hmm. And we're taught to, and I understand it. I completely understand the labeling of that. It should not be. I completely understand suffering abuse as a child or, you know, yeah. seeing people suffer, wanting to label that should not be. But as an exercise, exploring, experiencing anything, you name it, fill in the blank with anything you want to experience through the eyes of source, just as an exercise, mm-hmm. not as a mandate, not as this is what you have to do. No, so you, what so- you experience is what you experience, but have allow yourself. And I wouldn't necessarily start with the most horrific, tragic thing you can imagine. I don't think that's where you start. Yeah. Work your way up. Right. St- start mm-hmm. with easier things and then kind of work your way into, well, can I wrap my mind around the appreciation of X, Y, Z? And I, I've done that. I've done a lot of this work. And that's what I'm trying to communicate here is that I have asked source about other physical environments and very, very, the, the clarity to me of other physical environments are vastly different than earth. Everything is unique. Earth mm-hmm. is a unique environment, a unique experience for a soul to come and manifest in physical, move through a linear experience that is what we would consider in physical temporary and becoming a more expanded version of ourselves eternally in the having of the experience. So in out, like we were saying before we came on, this, this, the stream has said it's a weekend trip. Our, our physical body is, a, is like a rental car. You know, we, we create a physical vehicle to have the human physical experience. We return it to the earth environment when we're done with it. And then our being is eternal. Our being, our being is consciousness and certainly moves on. But in these other environments, there is infinite scenarios of other environments. And there are other environments that operate in such a sophistication just because the belief system developed differently. Yeah. Yeah. Humanity created what I call the matrix, but that's our own creation here on earth. So there is a, a, a scenario where the physical beings don't judge death at all. No matter who it is, what the relationship is, what the age is in physical. They're, 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 in yeah, out. They're, okay, fine. In out. No problem. In out. Yeah. This is what we expect. It's yeah. highly sophisticated, but we're capable of it. Yeah. If I'm yeah. capable of it, anyone's capable of it. <laughs> so <laughs> that's what I'm that's what I'm really talking about. Yeah. And I think I agree. There there is there is an opportunity for people to 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 look at any experience in a in a different way. And, and when it comes to when it comes to death, I think, you know, especially the kind of classic lived a nice life, died in their sleep thing, especially in, in the West, we're just taught about it the wrong way. You know, there are other cultures that celebrate death in a, in a completely different ritualistic way, in a completely different mindset on it. They're much more a celebration of the life and a celebration of who that person was. And it's not so much mourning the loss but celebrating the experience you know we, we just have this whole thing about it something's gone instead of something's a cycle has 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 begun again you know we well, even in we western culture you're right we're moving in, in because i was thinking about funerals when i was a child how it was very dark everyone wore black you had to dress mm-hmm. up in black it was very sad the day mm-hmm. was again heavy and sad and I was speaking with my stepmother about the funeral arrangements for my father. And she says, they want to do a slideshow. Apparently that's a thing now. <laughs> you know. And I said, I, I've seen that. I've seen like more of a montage of the person's life. Mm-hmm. And instead of focusing the funeral experience on the loss, it's more celebration of what was. This is who yeah. this person was. This, I love that idea. She's, she's warming yeah. up to it, I think. But I love that idea. And mm-hmm. it's, it's changing for everyone, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It kind of brings it kind of brings a bit more, a bit more of a celebration and a, and a and a joyous occurrence, you know. And and, and you know the stream teaches us that when you have those moments, when you remember those people fondly, they are there with you again, you know. Yeah. They, because they become that you tap into the vibration of who they were, and then you can feel them, you can connect with them. Yeah, and yeah. what you're connecting with is the very best of them, because the highest vibration version of them that you can imagine is how they are once they release their physical vehicle and release the ego that is attached to that mm-hmm. because the mm-hmm. ego is just a tool to discern preference while we're in physical. Well, when you're no longer physical, you don't need that anymore. 
So the yeah. ego fades away and the source version of you that's always there really emerges as, as the being. Mm -hmm. And so that's mm -hmm. when you hear about your higher self or your inner being, it's the source version of us, which mm -hmm. is appreciation of all that is. Well, if you're practicing that as a way of life and you stumble upon, you know, you're practicing it every day and then suddenly a, a death occurs unexpectedly, you can choose to apply that mindset instead of the suffering mindset. Yeah. Now you don't have to, and other people around you may not understand it. I was talking to my sister about having to speak at the service. And I said, I will speak if my stepmother wants that to happen. I don't think she does want anybody to speak, but you know, if she does, I have to be cautious in my preference because my belief system is so vastly different than probably just about everybody else that's going to be attending. I can't get up and have this kind of conversation at my father's funeral. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This was his physical vehicle. It's his rental car. He's returned it. And maybe I could, maybe they would appreciate it. Maybe they wouldn't. But when you start talking about appreciating the things that the, the matrix teaches us that we have to demonize, that's what I'm here to challenge. That's what the stream of David is all about is really challenging all of those matrix ideas so that we alleviate our own suffering because our own suffering is our own creation. Yeah. So yeah, if we choose to suffer, there's nothing wrong with that. But if we were wanting to not suffer, well, then that's what the stream's guidance is all about. Mm -hmm. Your your opinion of everything is just your own creation. And you've probably absorbed a lot of that thinking in the connected matrix that we're operating in, but you don't have to. You can be the source version of you all the time and literally move through life and appreciation of all things, even the things that you're not supposed to appreciate. Yeah. Yeah. It's difficult, right? Because we're brainwashed from an early age into, depending on where you're born and, and, and what culture you grow up in, this is what happens. This is what you're doing. This is what you, you know, this is what's going to happen. This is how you need to behave. And yeah. This is how you're supposed to feel about this. It's tragic. Yeah. It's awful. It's terrible. It should never happen, but it does. You're, that's you're that's where I always get it does. This is what it, it's happening. This this is mm -hmm. what happened. So how mm -hmm. can I label it should not be when it is? Yeah, and 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 listen, death is birth and death are the only two things that are guaranteed. You know, like I don't I don't know why everyone's so freaking out about this thing. We're it's everyone is going to get there some way or another. You know, no yeah. one's escaping this. Yeah, it is funny how much we fear death, and it's the one thing that we all know we're going to experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was it? What's that saying? Death and taxes, two things you can't escape. <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of, yeah, it's, it's it's funny. And I think one of the things I found, you know, we were talking about this before we hit record. One of the things I found really comforting in in the the experience of, of you know, my my, uh, my mom's um, passing or soon to be passing is that I just got this, this freedom and this kind of weightlessness to enjoy the experience and to have the experience. And when I'm sad, I let myself be sad. And when I'm happy, I let myself be happy. And when I'm frustrated, I let myself be frustrated. And it's just, it's, you know, every time I catch myself being like, oh, it's like, hang on, this is the experience you're having. And how lucky are you to be able to have this experience? You know, most people, you, you know, you, you, you didn't get to spend time close to your dad before he passed and stuff and a lot of people don't get to have that the, the luxury really of, of that experience yeah you know it's funny i saw i saw him in 20 they live in austin i live in southern california uh and it's you know it's a whole day travel to get there because we have to connect flights and i saw him in 2021 and he was not in great shape and i remember telling michael this is probably the last time i'm going to see my father i thought that mm -hmm. and then he rebounded and we went back this year in may and he was better he was funny. He was, you know, going out to dinner with us and, you know, kind of interacting and, and he was driving and, you know, he was, he was much better. Uh, but it was the last time I saw him it was mm -hmm. this past May. And that's the way it will, will always be now. Mm -hmm. And I went and looked at my last text with him the other day and I hearted my last text. My stepmother, oh. if the phone is on, she's probably like, who's texting? You know? <laughs> I thought, you know, that's, that's the last exchange I had with my father. I did speak to him briefly in the hospital. He sounded awful. Mm -hmm. and I, you know, I don't even remember exactly what we said, but um, mm -hmm. for some reason, I'm more into texting than talking. So the last text is yeah. more valuable to me than the last conversation anyway. Yeah. And he was so excited about the, the dog he just got. Yeah, we spoke he about had, it a, you know, a day with, but, you know, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. And that's, and that's great, right? And that's kind of a good, a good experience of how he was still young at heart 
kind of to, right up to the end. Definitely. And I think he was getting younger at heart uh, toward mm-hmm. the end. And I, I think that there's a reason for that. Let's take a quick break and um, we'll be right back with Matt Garden. We are back with Manifesting Matt Garden. Hello. And we've been talking about the exciting subject of death. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's favorite topic. But really, it's it's just about experiencing life through the eyes of source, which we all are capable of because we're all mm-hmm. beings of source and appreciating what is instead of labeling mm-hmm. anything it should not be. And mm-hmm. anytime we're suffering, we can always stop and realize, why, why do I feel down my spiral right now? Why do I feel a lower vibrational state? It's because I'm labeling something it should not be. Mm-hmm. I shouldn't be experiencing this. I shouldn't be in such a hurry. I shouldn't be running so late. I shouldn't be feeling this way. Whatever it is, it's that should not be labeling. Mm-hmm. And the reason I share my stuff all the time is because I like to be the example of someone who's applying the stream's teachings, not living in perfection. Yeah, because I don't think we're here for perfection. I, I don't think there's any mm-hmm. value in perfection. The value mm-hmm. is in, hey, I had this experience where someone passed away and I didn't label it as should not be. And I actually experienced it very differently. Mm-hmm. It was mm-hmm. joyful. It was appreciation mm-hmm. of all they were. It was mm-hmm. appreciation of all they still are in non-physical because the, the wholeness of who we are is not attached to the physical vehicle the way we think it is while we're here. The wholeness of who we are is consciousness and our consciousness is eternal. So we're here having a temporary physical experience, but when we're finished with this experience, we leave the rental car behind, so to speak. We turn it in (laughs) to return it to planet Earth, as as the stream says, and we are then one with source, Mm -hmm. all knowing, all seeing, all appreciation, all abundance, no ego, no preference. What, what a magical experience for the person who's, who's passing. Oh, absolutely. And yeah. the, the near-death yeah. experiences, somebody asked me about this on, on a TikTok I did the other day. The near-death experiences, I believe you know, that there's, there's some consistency in those experiences and there's, there's some differences. Mm-hmm. And I think that the experience is still being filtered through the ego when the person goes and comes back, which is what an, a near-death experience is you're still filtering it through your human mind and you're Mm -hmm. making sense of it via your belief system. Mm -hmm. So that's why somebody can have a near death experience and see Jesus. If that's their belief system, I saw Jesus, Mm -hmm. I saw God, I touched the hand of God and I saw, Mm -hmm. and that I think that for them, that's very real where somebody that has a totally different belief system may have a completely different experience. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you can only process, you you can only process experiences from your frame of reference, right? If you have, right. If they no, are living no. to tell about it, then it was near death. Yeah, yeah. and, and <laughs> they have to come back and and they have to come back and explain it using the words they have and using the 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 life view. Yeah, they and have. the structure is your belief system. The structure, yeah. the framework from which you experience Earth, your yeah. life, yeah. is your belief system, and that's yeah. true for all of us. Yeah, yeah. I believe I'm lucky. I believe I'm unlucky. I believe life is hard. I believe life is easy. I believe we're sinners. Magical. Yeah. 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 I manifest with these. (laughs) Yeah. Um, That's all belief system stuff. And it's so funny because when you start talking to someone about what they're experiencing and they're arguing for their limitations, you see it's easier very often to see in someone else than what you can see in yourself. Of course. I have witnessed so many people. Yeah. But you're with yourself all the time. Yeah. And it's not always fun to be honest with yourself. (laughs) <laughs> but it's so easy to see in other people when you have sort of a bird's eye view and you're really listening mm-hmm. and tuning into people, how, how, how absolutely we are creating our reality from our beliefs. Oh yeah. hundred percent. hundred percent. Yeah. And even, and even scientists now account for placebo in all their tests they do. You sure. Know? That uh, belief, and, and... belief makes up a, a huge part of what we consider our reality. In fact, all of it really. 100%. I, th- I think that's probably something that will that will become more and more apparent in in the decades to come and in generations to come. It's like you, just how important your your belief is and your mindset is, and how important your view of things is. And you know, look at look at this conversation. We believe different things about death to most people in the Western world, and so our experience of it is vastly different to, to yeah. most people. You know, it's, why? Because we have a we, we've changed our belief systems. And, and it's a kind of it's kind of an abstract thing to think 
before I did tire, you know, five years ago now, I would be, if, if had I not had that moment, had I not had that experience and gone down that rabbit hole, I would be having a completely, completely different experience now. You know, I probably wouldn't be up here um, and it would just be a kind of distant thing that happens over there that I didn't want to deal with because it made me feel uncomfortable and, you know, I'd rather just put my head in the sand than, than kind of in, appreciate the experience. Yeah. I mean, you, you were living in a, a beautiful place in Sydney yeah, in, the, in yeah. the city and you moved away from there to be closer to your parents. Yeah. And it'd be very easy to label that as this, I shouldn't have to do this. This shouldn't be, this isn't fair, you know, all yeah. of that stuff, yeah. but you're, yeah. but you're doing it and you're doing it and you're finding joy in the, in the experience. Oh, and this, you know, yeah. And, and, and I mean, this is a little bit of a sidetrack here, but my life has, has expanded in so many ways because of this decision. You know, it's just, it's kind of a new chapter in, in, in my life that was kind of forced upon me by this seemingly bad thing that's happening. And yet I'm, I'm, you know, I'm kind of the happiest I've been in a long time, even though life is not, is very far from perfect. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And that's, that's a good point. That all this, this concept of we're supposed to be chasing, chasing perfection. That's all the matrix yeah. that we need to be crushing, you know, business and we need to be crushing our physical fitness and we need to be crushing our, there's nothing wrong with having a preference for any of those things, but this concept that we're supposed to be chasing some ideal and then comparing ourselves against the ideal and suffering in the comparison that just lowers our vibration. It makes us pawns of the matrix really. Yeah. So it leads to suffering. Excuse yeah, me. Suffering. Learning to be joyous in whatever is, is a superpower. Yeah. Yeah, is a superpower because then you you aren't rattled you aren't shaken you aren't taken down you are you are a being of source and a being of light no matter what experience you're moving through and you're mm -hmm. actually firsthand seeing the value in what you're moving through instead of demonizing it labeling it as should not be suffering in it and maybe having to do it over and over and over again until your soul finally you know gets convinces you that hey all that stuff is good stuff yeah. The stuff yeah. that the matrix tells you shouldn't be the suffering stuff. That's, that's where the growth happens. That's where the expansion of consciousness is actually occurring, which is mm -hmm. why you're here, by the way. Exactly. Exactly. I love that, that, that point you made earlier about our soul is here to have a physical experience, but the reason it's having that physical experience is to expand itself. You know, we kind of forget that, that where expansion the, where is guaranteed, no matter what the experience is, if you come and you're, you're born and you're, Beyonce, <laughs> you know, you're talented, you're wealthy, you're loved by you know, billions and <laughs> millions of people. And, uh, you know, you're, that's your experience. There's expansion there. Mm -hmm. And if you're born into starvation, there's expansion there also. Mm -hmm. And from the eternal perspective, there's no right or wrong way to have the human experience. And when you're mm -hmm. no longer in physical, you look at the the child that suffered and maybe didn't even make it out of childhood and the person that is the you know the the top of the top of the of the abundance pyramid in 3D they're just experiences it's not it's not one isn't better than the other even though in, in physical i totally understand would i rather be a child that's starving to death or would i rather be a you know famous pop star well of course you're probably going to pick the pop star i get that and yet, and yet perspective is completely different. Yeah. Yeah. And yet we say that, oh, it'd be great to be Beyonce, blah, blah, blah. You know, I've traveled a lot in third world countries and some of the happiest people I've ever met yeah. in my entire life were kids playing in a street. People living in simplicity very and accepting and appreciating exactly what they're experiencing are yeah. the happiest people. You know, it, yeah. it's, it's probably quite a, a burden to be Beyonce. I don't know, but I would imagine when you've got that much going on and that many people depending on you, there's a lot of pressure that you have to place on yourself to always be better. And yeah, that's not yeah, necessarily yeah. our nature to do that. So who knows? You never yeah. know what's going on for someone inter in internally. I know that uh, there are a lot of billionaires that sit on Twitter all the time and complain about everything. It seems So that yeah. doesn't seem like such a happy experience to always be angry about something. True, true, true. Um, uh, we've kind of, <laughs> we've kind of drifted off a bit. Well, that's but, okay. That's what I do. Yeah, it's nice. That's good. That's good. But I think, I think the, the drift of David is what it should be instead of the stream of David. <laughs> the gentle allowing. So, something that's that's been um, 
you know, that I've been focusing on the last couple of weeks too, since, since we last spoke, which is habit, which is really helping me at the moment is just this concept of allowing, you know, and, and I'd like this to happen and then just leaving it out there to happen and then trusting that it happened, you know? Oh yeah. We have, well, you know, think about what Ty, Ty is trusting your abundance, just, yeah. just discerning a preference and letting it go and enjoying yeah. the now and when it shows up, if it shows up and how it shows up is not your concern. No, just trust that it will show up. You yeah. Know? Well, kind of like my story with Hazel, you know, about how she made that prediction. And then I didn't realize until later that, oh, wow, all that came true. That's mm -hmm. so cool. Yeah. That's so cool mm -hmm. to realize after the fact that you've manifested something that you forgot you even wanted, yeah. as opposed yeah. to needing it and wanting it. And it's where is it? And why isn't it here? What am I doing yeah. wrong? And I've got to go to another seminar and I have to manifest better. You know, yeah. good Lord, no, you're creating your own suffering. If you're doing that, you can have the experience yeah. if you want, but you don't have to. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe if I pay more, my manifestation will come here quicker. <laughs> yeah. Let me go to both days of the seminar. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, for those of you that are uh, subscribing on Patreon, Matt and I are going to pick up this discussion over there uh, and give you some, some tips and tricks as always to have it, have it uh, get more into this mindset if you're interested. And for everyone that listened, thank you so much for listening. Uh, as always, we appreciate you deeply. Be sure to subscribe wherever you're listening to us. Uh, your feedback is fantastic. So go review us. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, yeah, let us know, I mean, let us know how, 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 you know, if this made you more curious about, about the way you, you view death and um, if you've got some stuff you'd like to share with us, we'll, we'll happily discuss it on yeah. the next podcast. And what you want more of, because we're always yeah. here for that. We're always here yeah. for your, your questions uh, mean a lot to us because they make more, us think about sometimes more, things yeah. that we don't think about. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you all for listening. Matt, thanks as always. Bye, guys. This episode doesn't have to end here. You can join us over on Patreon for the roundtable discussion of everything the stream shared today and how to apply it in your life. Join us at patreon.com forward slash the stream of David. I hope to see you over there. <laughs>